So, first things first, interesting developments. Interesting developments in the UK and something that I generally didn't think was going to happen, especially considering all the work that went into um, developing this and all the debates back and forth and the fact that the government, you know, seemed like, especially earlier on in the pandemic, they seemed like they, had a, um, they were on a crusade to basically eviscerate the hospitality or the nightlife industry overall. So for this turnaround to happen, I'm just completely flabbergasted. So this is to the BBC. It says England vaccine passport plans ditch, said Sajid Javid. Absolutely insane. This is after I reported the other day that there were, you know, people in the nightlife industry, certain bodies were basically saying that the plan to introduce the vaccine passports is going to be chaotic, right? And more so, I think their concerns were more so centered around pubs and pubs for and bars for the most part. I think clubs, maybe they can install or basically, you know, um, get up to scratch when it comes to that process a lot easier because you already got people screening you at the door, whether it comes to list, whether it comes to searching or whatnot or checking your ticket. So you can just introduce one more person to maybe check your vaccine passport, but to introduce a passport at a pub or a bar in London, um, especially when you consider some of the foot traffic that these guys have busy it gets on a weekend or whatnot or special occasions or bank holidays and stuff, it just seems ridiculous and, and just unmanageable really. So the article says the following plans to introduce the vaccine passport for access into nightclubs and large events in England will not go ahead. The health secretary said Savage Javi told the BBC we shouldn't be doing things for the sake of doing it, which is crazy to hear that line from the government, because that's exactly what most of us who are in opposition to the vaccine passport were arguing on the on social media and just in general. Um, the idea was kind of made some sort of sense if you wanted to. I don't know, stave off the amount of cases and maybe encourage more people to get vaccinated. But I generally feel, I think a lot more, a lot of people feel this too. Like it's, it's really naive or it's really um, unreasonable to accept people to expect people who haven't got the vaccine now to suddenly go and get it. It just isn't going to happen. If you haven't got it now, by this time, it's either you don't want to get it or you're never going to get it anyway. No, it's either you don't want to get it or you haven't got around to getting it. But it's unlikely that we're going to convince people that don't want to get it to get it. It's just not going to happen. So this idea we're going to get, you know, 80% of the population vaccinated is just, you know, it's just ludicrous. Um, so if that's the case introducing vaccine passports just seems a bit redundant especially with all the means of testing we have at the moment especially now with the developments we're learning in, in the states especially with people you know getting the vaccine having maybe boosters as well and still getting covid there is no real safeguard against not getting the covid the, you know covid in the first place the best solution so far we've got of course is the vaccine but there is no surefire way to kind of make sure you never ever get affected so if that's the case vaccine passports just seem like another silly gesture that we're doing just to make ourselves feel safe it doesn't really add to the bottom line of people's lives being saved overall um, the continuous said he said the government had looked at the evidence adding that I'm pleased to say we'll not be going ahead it was thought that the plan which came under criticism from venues and some MPs would be reduced end of the month number 10 stressed it would kept it in reserve should it be needed over the autumn or winter of course um, they never like rolling anything in or out fully right it's always kind of in the middle such a strange government we have in it you would imagine they'd be a little bit more like I won't say iron fist but a little bit more like um steadfast and sure in what they do like when i make a decision i made a decision but there's always a u-turn in everything that they do which isn't the worst thing especially for us um citizens and stuff it's nice to you know see a government that can admit their mistakes in a weird roundabout way but it's just interesting how there's always kind of a back door you know um at the heart of everything that they do um, it says that under the scheme, people will have to be required to show proof whether double vaccinated, a negative test, or finishing a self isolating the PCR test in order to gain entry to clubs and other crowded events. The Nighttime Industries Association warned the plans could have crippled the industry and seen nightclubs facing discrimination cases. Of course, it's already bad enough as it is in certain parts of central London with how they treat men, how they treat black men, how they treat, you know whatever other domination of men for, especially if you go into clubs in general or black women when they go into um, certain clubs in Soho imagine you introduce vaccine passports it legitimately give them a reason to just like you know purposely and wantingly discriminate from people especially those who come from those minority communities who are you know by their own admittance um have low kind of acceptance when it comes or low, low adoption when it comes to getting a vaccine in the first place it's just crazy um the industry body has since welcomed the move saying it would be um it hoped the businesses could now plan for some certainty to start of the rebuild sector and regain customers confidence the music venue trust which aims to protect grassroots venues also welcomed the announcement describing vaccine passports as problematic there was opposition too from tory mps on the covid recovery group and the liberal democrats whose leader david called them divisive 
expensive and unworkable and expensive. This point here about giving venues opportunity to kind of really get their feet under the table and start planning and rebuilding is really poignant because think about it. That's true, right? If you owned a bar or restaurant or venue, you had this in the back of your head and you were legitimately worried. Like, what are you going to do? Should you go and hire more staff? Even though you don't have enough punters to maybe justify it at the moment, it's not as busy as it once was. Like I said before, I've been to a few and, you know, they're, they're, they're okay, but they're not at the levels that they were prior. People's maybe decisions and habits have maybe changed since the lockdown. People are, you know, um, taking up drinking indoors, making cocktails and stuff, whatnot, maybe brewing stuff in their bathtub. You know, people's behaviors have changed during COVID. You picked up, everyone's picked up little different hobbies. So it won't surprise me a lot of the people that generally would, uh, you know, parade around pubs all the time of maybe decide to swap them for going into parks and buying your own beers that way so that's one thing so imagine they've lost out a huge chunk of people who are generally they're one of their regulars off the back of the fact covid or the back of the pandemic sorry then on top of that they're losing people again because of the you know the pcr to certain venues anyway clubs and stuff you have to take a pcr test or lateral flow test to gain entry and then on top of that the government was asking you to put to in you know install this covid vaccine passport scheme which i don't know how it would have worked in a par and bub what would you have done would you have asked for the proof at the door would you have asked for proof at the point of where the person tries to get served at the till or the table where would they have gone and who does that is it someone you hire is that a, is that a security guard do you have to pay them more it's just it just it's just unworkable once you get into the weeds of it and start really analyzing it just didn't make any sense speaking on andrew marso javid said we just couldn't be doing things for the sake of it because others are doing it and we should look at every possible intervention properly i've never liked the idea of saying to people you must show your papers for something to do what is just an everyday activity but we were right to properly look at it. We've looked at it and probably and whilst we should kept it in reserve as a potential option, I'm pleased to say that we'll not be going ahead with the plans for vaccine passports. Um, after the government was running scared of the policy after criticism from its other bank benches, Mr. Javi rejected the idea saying the vaccine passports, which were not needed because of other things in the wall of defence, including high vaccine, uptake testing, surveillance and other new treatments, of course. And that was always the case. I think you're... Especially when it comes to venues, right? Like, because I remember seeing a lot of a lot of like you know club nights and stuff saying in some of their promo emails they're sending out, basically saying as soon as vaccine passports get you know introduced, they're still going to require people to take lateral flow tests before they attend their parties, and that was more so because you know there's a whole sector of people who are out of work for the best part of a year and a half, myself included, right? When it comes to working in the hospitality industry as a DJ and whatnot. Those people want nothing more but to continue doing what they love. And the prospect or the idea of losing that because they're not willing to introduce some safeguards is just not worth considering. So they're like, you know what? I'd rather annoy some of my partners and ask for a lateral flotus on top of a COVID vaccine passport just to ensure that our sector isn't to blame if the numbers do end up spiking because that's, you know what's going to happen, right? That always does happen. Whenever the numbers go up, they will suddenly start blaming the young people. They're the ones going out. They're the ones transmitting it. They're spending too much time outdoors, going to packed venues, all this sort of gobbledygook group right when really there's loads of points of where the virus can spread and peak and whatever we don't really know anything about it really for the most part we're just sort of just making it up as we kind of learn new information or you know realizing it as we learn new information or new cases spring up all over the place so there were a lot of places clubs especially that were willing to add that extra layer on top like covid passports and the lateral flow test so it's good to see that that kind of passport thing is out of the way and lateral flow test although it's annoying you have to kind of order a pack ahead of time you have to do it before you go the, the kind of validation process isn't that bad it's like half an hour plus however long it takes you to get a text from the nhs which isn't long either so in all it's about 40 minutes to get it done from setup and all that stuff and getting a text and then you're free to basically go and you could use that also the good thing as well if you can use it within 72 hours i think you could use it on the friday saturday if you're going to go out back to back days which makes it a lot more um easier to kind of plan and whatnot going forward but i for one i'm happy i have to be honest um i wasn't looking forward to having to remember to have my passport or my phone and then take the test on top of it it's already difficult having to remember to take the lateral photos before you go out you know let you know least least of all having to have the covid passport on your phone imagine the days that your phone's not charged all these little things will come into place it just makes the whole event stressful so i'm glad that sort of roadblock has been put to one side i'm glad it's been put to one side